The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler, written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan, and starring tonight two of radio's foremost personalities, Grace Coppin and Carl Swenson in Till Death Do Us Part. This is The Mysterious Traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we witness the curious drama of an overpowering love that even death could not shake. A story that I call, Till Death Do Us Part. It's late at night, and Chris Worby, a successful young businessman, is dreaming about his beautiful and affectionate wife, Vivian. But it doesn't seem to be a pleasant dream. Oh, please, Vivian, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Why do you insist on waiting on me hand and foot? I can't stand it, I tell you. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Chris, darling, you really must wear your muffler today. It's quite chilly. Really, Vivian, I don't need it. I go very well. Your wife's on the phone, Mr. Werby. Vivian, this is the fifth time you called me this morning. But, darling, you had a headache. I just wanted to make sure you're all right. I'm all right. I'm fine. But please don't call again. Oh, Chris, your wife's waiting in your office for you. Darling, I brought your vitamin pills. You forgot to take them this morning. Your wife's on the phone, Mr. Werby. Oh, Chris, Vivian's waiting in the office. Your wife's on the phone, Mr. Werby. Chris, darling. Chris, darling. I call Dr. Williams, Chris. These nightmares you've been having worry me. No, I don't need it, Doctor. Then let me get you some hot milk to make you sleep, darling. I'm worried about I you. I don't want anything except to be left alone. Why, Chris, I, I just want to help you. I don't want help. I just want some peace. Vivian, we can't go on like this. You're smothering me. You won't let me live my own life. I, I want a divorce. A divorce? Oh, Chris, you're being silly. You know you don't mean that. I do mean it. If you won't divorce me, then I'm leaving you. In the morning, for good. But, Chris, you can't be serious about this. I'm deadly serious, Martin. I'm leaving the business in your hands, and I am clearing out. Maybe gone for six months, a year. Maybe I'll never come back. But why, Chris, why? Why? Because I am drowning in an ocean of love and attention, that's why. You know, Vivian. She won't divorce me, so I'm clearing out. But where will you go? I don't know. I'll get on a train, get off someplace, buy another ticket, ride a while longer, end up someplace where no one can find me. Not even Vivian. Well, Chris, if you... Oh, excuse me. Yes? Mrs. Werby is here to see Mr. Werby, Mr. Martin. Oh, uh, ask her to wait. Yes, sir. She mustn't see me. Stall her off, Martin. Now I, I'm, I'm leaving by the back way, and for heaven's sake, after I'm gone, convince her I mean it. I'm not coming back. So Chris Werby fled from the wife who loved him so much that her love was worse than hate. He went from one city to another, crossing and recrossing his own tracks like a hunted animal. Three months later, he found himself in Portland, Oregon. In his room at a leading hotel, he drew a long breath of freedom and picked up the telephone. Hello, room service, please. Room service? Uh, please send up the waiter. Thank you. Oh, so I think I'll stay. New York, 3,000 miles away. That ought to be far enough to give me a chance to start a new life. Well, oh, that's fast service. Just a moment. Come in and um, I... Uh... Vivian! 
Hello, Chris, darling. No. No, it can't be you. Well, of course it's me, Chris. Who else would it be? But I, I didn't even know I was coming here myself. How did you follow me? Chris, darling, I've only been a little way behind you ever since you left. Don't you understand? There's a bond between us. A bond of love nothing can break. It would lead me to you, even if you traveled to the other side of the world. What, what do you want? Darling, haven't you had enough of traveling? I want you to come back with me. I've made reservations on the evening plane. No, I'm not going back with you. Then I'll just have to stay here with you, Chris. Oh, darling, if you'll be reasonable, so will I. If you'll come back, I'll promise that everything will be different. I won't bother you anymore. Truly, I won't. I, I could only believe that. But it's true, Chris. You'll see. Everything is going to be different. Oh, please. All right, Vivian. I'll try. Just once more. <laughs> Gentlemen, this will acknowledge your order of the 25th and advise you that... Your wife's on the phone, Mr. Werby. So, all right. Put her on. Hello, darling. I just wondered what you'd like for dinner tonight. Vivian, you mustn't bother me with such things. I don't care what we have for dinner tonight. This is the fourth time you've called me this morning. <laughs> Darling, what is it? Yeah. Another nightmare. Yes, yes, another nightmare. All day and all night, one long nightmare. You promised you'd change, that you stopped hounding me, left me alone, and you haven't. But, darling, I love you. I just want to do things for you. Vivian, I warn you, I only came back to see how it had worked. If it doesn't stop, I will leave you again. I swear it. Then I'll just have to follow you again, Chris. No matter where you go, I'll know. Remember, darling, the minister said, till death do us part. Till death do us part. Yes, I remember. What, Chris? I was just thinking. Perhaps I need a vacation. How would you like to run up to Maine for a few days? What? We could try the deep sea fishing. Just the two of us. Oh, I'd love it, dear. Just the two of us. Oh, it sounds wonderful. So a desperate idea was born in Chris's mind. There was only one way out of the nightmare Vivian's love was making of his life. Only one way. He decided to take. A few days later, he and Vivian were out fishing far from land when uh, somehow the boat caught fire. They found themselves struggling for life in the icy water. Chris, why doesn't someone come? We've been in the water for hours. No, Vivian, only about 20 minutes. Oh, it seems much longer. I'm such a bad swimmer. Oh. Help me, Chris. I'm all out of breath. Oh, I'm sorry, Vivian. You've clung to me for the last time. You're on your own now. What? What do you mean? I can swim for hours. When help does come, they'll only find me, not you. Chris! You don't know what you're saying. I tried to reason with you, but you wouldn't listen. Then I ran away. You followed me. It's the only way that I'll ever be free of you. Can't do this, Chris. I love you. Grabbing me around the neck isn't going to help you. No! Yeah. You can't drown me. I won't let you go. I won't. Yes, you will. There. Goodbye, Vivian. Chris, thank me. Don't let me drown. This is the end. Do you hear? I'm free. I'll never leave you. I love you, Chris. I'll come back to you. She's gone. I'm free. 
I should say she is. We were engaged once. Uh, show her in, Martin. Sure, Chris. In here, Miss Ballin. Thank you. Anne. Hello, Chris. Gosh, Anne, it's wonderful to see you again. <laughs> Why, it's been at least four years uh, since... Five years, Chris. Five years, three months, and four days since you left Owensville. Five years. Mm-hmm. A lot's happened. Chris, I just learned that you lost Vivian six months ago. I want you to know how sorry I am. Thank you, Ray. How long are you in town for? Oh, I'll have you know I'm now a resident of this fair metropolis. I have a job here as of yesterday. And that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> you may not know it, but you're going to see a good deal of me. And Chris and Ann Ballen did see a lot of each other. They picked up the romance that had been interrupted five years before when Chris first met Vivian. And three months later, they were married. With Anne, Chris was as happy as he'd been uh, unhappy with Vivian. Oh, Chris, it's a lovely present. But you shouldn't have been so extravagant. Well, this is our first anniversary, isn't it? What? We've been married a whole month. Oh, my, a month. So we have our time flying. <laughs> Yes, darling. Are you, are you glad I looked you up in such a shameless way? I did it on purpose, you know. I was determined to have you back at last. It was a wonderful idea, yes. darling. I don't know why I didn't think about it first. Five years ago, I'd have been too modest. But you see, I learned something from Vivian. Let's not talk about Vivian, dear. She was... Well, let's not talk about it. You know... You sometimes call me Vivian. Mm -hmm. Good Lord, it's just a habit, I suppose. I, I, I never think of her anymore, Anne. I swear it. Oh, Chris, a message came for you. A uh, message? Yes, from a fellow named Sidney Rand. Said he was from your, from your hometown, was here for the day. He'd like you to meet him at the Murray Hill Bar after work for a drink if you can make it. Sidney Rand. Of course I can make it. Well, this is like old times, Chris. <laughs> Have another, huh? Yes, sure thing, Sidney. Bartender, two more of the same. Well, now tell me some more about the folks back in Owenville, Sidney. How's Sam Morris? Sam? Mm -hmm. oh, he's married now, got three kids. Ah. Jeff Layton married Margie Lewis about a year ago. I... I suppose you heard about Ann Ballin. <laughs> what can you tell me about Ann that I don't know already? I guess this will come as a shock to you, Chris, knowing how fond you used to be of her. But Ann died last month. What? What did you say? Ann Ballin. She died a month ago. But that's impossible. Sidney, you're wrong. Gosh, Chris, I, I wouldn't joke about such a thing. I was at the funeral myself with Sam Morris. But that couldn't be. That's true, Chris. They never did find out what she died from. It couldn't be. It couldn't be. Chris. Chris, where are you going? Hey, what's the matter with you? Chris, come back. Anne? Anne? Anne, where are you? Anne, answer me. She's not here. She's not in the house. Looks as if she hadn't been here all day. She... Maybe... She hasn't been here at all. Maybe I... I... I wouldn't joke about such a thing, Chris. I was at the funeral myself with Sam Morris. Sam Morris. Yes, that's it. Operator. I want to put through a long-distance call to Owensville, Pennsylvania, to Mr. Samuel Morris. Hello? 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 Hello, is, is Sam Morris there? Oh, I'm sorry, he's out. This is his mother speaking. 
Can I help you? Oh, yes, uh, Mrs. Morris. This is Chris Werby. You remember me. Why, yes, of course, Chris. How are you? I'm uh, fine. I, I want to ask something. How is Ann Ballant? Ann Ballant? Yeah. How is she? Why, Chris, Ann died last month. Ann died last month? Yes, very unexpectedly. You sure? It, it, it couldn't have been somebody else? Oh, no. We all attended the funeral, Chris. And we saw her in the coffin at the church just before the service. Thank you. Thank you very much. No. I don't believe it. She's alive. We're married. I gotta go see her. I've got to go see her body for myself. <laughs> Mister, you must be crazy. Getting me out of bed at two in the morning. Look up the cemetery records. I'm sorry, Mr. Hendricks, but you're the caretaker of West Creek Cemetery, and I've got to know if a girl named Ann Ballin is buried here. I know that's what you said. Why well, do you have to know at two in the morning? If she's buried here. If she waits. I tell you, I've got to know now. I'll give you twenty dollars to look it up for me. Twenty dollars? Yeah. I have to see it first. <laughs> Seems to me you're a little touched in the head about the whole here, thing. Here, here you are. Now get out that record all book. All right, all right, mister. I keep it right here handy. Never had to look at it at 2 a.m. before, though. What did you say the name is? Ballon. Ann Ballon. Let me see. B.B. Here we are. First name in the beast. Ballon, George, Martha, Ann. Ann Ballon. Are you certain? Here it is, right down in black and white. Interred October 16, 1948. Section 15, plot 5. It can't be. Did you say, mister? I, I must see that grave. Opened. Well, you'll have to get a court order for that, mister. I want it open now. Tonight. What? Say, I don't know who you are, but you better get out of here. I'll give you $200 to open that grave. You must be crazy. That's against the law. $500. Nobody needs to know. $500? Yes. You got it with you? Right here. See? And that is all yours. If I can see whose body is buried in Ann Ballon's grave. Well, I shouldn't do it, but it won't do no harm, I reckon. It won't bother her any, that's sure. So give me the money, mister, and come on. <laughs> Listen to that dog. He knows what we're doing. We should be doing this, mister. The dead shouldn't be disturbed. Rest in peace, that's what the minister always says. Rest in peace till death do us part. Let's see who's inside that coffin, because Anne is not there. I know she is. All right, mister. I'll lift the lid now. I, I, I can't see anything. The shadows are so deep. I'll shine my light in. But be prepared now. <laughs> There ain't nobody in that coffin. It's empty. Empty. Yes, it's empty. I knew Anne couldn't be buried here. I knew she couldn't because a month ago I married her. Anne! Anne, where are you? Yes, Chris. Chris, here I am. Darling, where have you been all night? I've been so worried about oh, you. Oh, Anne, Anne, it's so good to feel you in my arms again. Oh, dear, you, you act as though you never expected to see me again. There was a moment when, when I, I thought I wouldn't. I, I thought, I don't know what I thought. But Chris, what happened? I, I've been so mixed up. I, you, you remember Sidney Rand, don't you? Yes, of course. Last evening, I had a drink with him, and he started telling me all the news of Owensville. And he told me that you'd been dead for a month. That I'd been dead for a month? Yeah. And then when I got home, you, you weren't here, and I, I thought... I, I don't know what I thought. Well, darling, it was only because I ran out of gas that I wasn't here when you got home. I should have known it was something like that, but then the, I phoned Sam Morris in Owensville, and his mother said the same thing, that she'd gone to your funeral a month ago. So I drove straight up to Owensville. Chris, you didn't. I'm afraid I did. I, I went to the cemetery where your family's buried. 
And there I found a grave. Yours. My grave? Yeah. The tombstone said, Anne Ballon, November 15th, 1922, October 14th, 1948. I couldn't believe my eyes. What did you do then, Chris? I paid the caretaker to help me dig up the coffin. And when we opened it, we found it empty. <laughs> Anne. <laughs> Anne, what is it? Why are you laughing like that? Anne! Chris. Anne Ballon is dead. Anne Ballon is dead? Anne, what's wrong with you? You're Anne Ballon! I'm not, Chris. Look deeply into my eyes. Don't you recognize me? Recognize you? Yes. I'm not Anne. They were right. She was dead. Don't you know who I am now, darling? Do you remember that day in the ocean? I told you I'd never leave you, that I'd come back to you. Vivian. No. You, you can't have come back. Your face, your eyes, your Anne. Only outwardly, Chris. Close your eyes. Listen to my voice. Now you recognize me. Don't you, darling? Vivian! You are Vivian! Yes, Chris. Vivian. In Anne's body. Because mine was lost at sea. You can't be! But I am, darling. Nothing can ever separate us. I love you too much. I couldn't come back to you in my own body. So I stole Anne. You stole Anne's body? Yes, Chris. I drove her out of it. They thought she was dead. Before she was buried, I took her body. I escaped and closed the coffin so no one would know. Then I came to you. Oh, darling, now we can be together again as we were before. And I don't have to pretend to be Anne any longer. We'll be together forever. Together? Forever? Yes. Forever, Chris. Nothing will ever separate us again. Not even death. <laughs> This is the mysterious traveler again. Poor Chris. He'd have been so much happier if Vivian had only hated him instead of loving him. There's nothing he can do about it now. Everyone tells him he's so lucky to have a wife who loves him so much. And then they wonder why he gets violent. At uh, once I knew another man who... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. Here's an announcement of interest to listeners to this program. Mysterious Traveler comic books are now available at newsstands everywhere. Carl Caruso speaking. This is the world's largest network serving more than 500 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting Systems.